everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm 4975 and today we're going to be checking out an awesome DLC concept made by my good friend Lucifer Reap. And uh, I also had a little bit of a hand in making this one. I helped him out with the cars list so we'll get into that when we see that section of it. Um, but yeah, I just want to say full credit goes to Lucifer for coming up with this concept. It is absolutely fantastic and I believe he's hoping to get a trailer made for this. So as soon as we see that or hear anything about it, I will be doing a video on it. So if you want to see that, make sure you stick around the channel. But let's just get straight into it. So here we are on his Amino page. If you want to go and check out this article for yourself, I will leave a link in the description as always. But here we go. You can see it is made by Lucifer and we've got a bit of an introduction. I should mention it is called Street Culture, the DLC, and it is about drug running and... Um, car racing it's kind of a two-in-one dlc and this is a concept i want to stress that as well this is not like a leak or anything like that you can see right here it is a dlc concept so this is like a fan made uh, gta online dlc so here we go the introduction after a massive string of police raids against mc clubhouses people have to look elsewhere to get their drugs smuggled across san andreas and with the recent establishment of the Blaine County Drift Tournament, there's no shortage of drivers looking to make some extra money. And then we've got a picture, very simple here, just the kind of like logo for the DLC, Grand Theft Auto Online Street Culture. It looks very nice and very clean, I like it. And then we've got this DLC concept includes new legal drift events i want to stress the legal there because i guess there'll be some illegal ones as well underground drift races there we go they're the illegal ones a new dealership new vehicles and new vehicle customization new vehicle tuning um, new weapons new emotes new map changes and construction so, pre-update changes. About a month before the update changes start to happen around Los Santos. New dealerships and tune-up shops are popping up as either renovations or brand new construction sites around the Davis Quartz and Great Chaparral. A fluctuation of construction equipment that slowly, that slowly evolves into new windy roads and a track that will give drifters new opportunities to push their newfound parts and cars. Uh, so basically what he's trying to get at here is kind of uh, how we had in the casino update. Where about a month before the casino update actually released. Um, there was construction outside the casino which kind of hinted that there was a new uh, building going to be uh, you know popping up there and he wants to do a similar thing with this DLC so you can see there's like construction equipment here and this will pop up around the sort of Quartz Davis area which is like near the quarry for those of you who don't know. Um, and he wants to kind of like hint that this uh, map change is going to be coming. So then, once you load in uh, for the update for the first time, you will be loaded into an action-packed cutscene showing off a newly renovated quarry. So this takes place in the quarry with a new drift track and spectator box and tune-up shop. The cutscene then goes... Uh, through showing some of the new drift setup on some of the cars, the new dealership floors, before ending with some racers drifting around one of the new windy bends, before one of the racers crashes, showering drugs up into the air, out of the trunk, and poli uh, police lights and sirens can be heard in the distance. So this comes into the other kind of half of the DLC, which we're going to get onto in a minute, but it's kind of... Um, from what Lucifer's told me, it's kind of like a, um, a drug running DLC, but disguised as like a drift underground racing DLC. So it's kind of like drug running and uh, drifting and underground racing in one, which is really, really cool. I like that. So our first contact, after loading, uh, loading in the past, 
So after loading through the cutscene, so after you've watched the cutscene, you'll be greeted by a phone call from Alan Jerome, and he's the guy who owns the Arena War kind of uh, business. So you might have met him if you've bought the Arena War. Uh, immediately he starts ranting about his Arena War investment was a flop, and instead has decided to use his leftover money to transform the old Davis Quartz Quarry into a freshly built drift track. He then tells you in order to complete it, uh, you need to buy a track membership in order to get access to the main buildings and to the races. He then goes on to tell you that you could buy an optional garage space to tune your new builds instead of going to public ones scattered around San Andreas. So I like that um, there's going to be new tune-up sh tune shops. I'm guessing these are going to be similar to how Benny's works, where unlike the LSC, there's going to be like um, exclusive upgrades you can only get at these new uh, tune-up shops, kind of like how you can only get some of the upgrades at Benny's for like the low riders and things. But then you also have the option of, the, uh, of a private tune-up shop in the uh, quarry area is that as well so if you don't want to go to one of the public ones you can go to your own kind of like how you have your own um garage in the in the office area so that's pretty cool i like that that there's going to be some exclusive upgrades as well and then side construction new roads have popped up all over blaine county mostly consisting of uh, i think that's supposed to say windy roads um, built almost on purpose to, to help fuel a drifter's flame. These roads have been mostly taken, have mostly taken residence up in the Tongva Hills and Great Chaparral, which is kind of up near the Vinewood sign, I think, in that kind of area, that sort of like hilly bit. Um, you can correct me on that if I'm wrong. But then we've got the David Quartz Track and Buildings. Over the course of the renovations, the Davis Quartz Quarry has undergone some drastic changes. Some areas have been excavated to fit new buildings on the sideline, including the new buyable tune-up shop that is built into the side of the hill, which sounds really cool. I like that. Uh, the quarry has also been excavated in a spot to increase the size and the road height to make it more driver-friendly. The track has been made out of fresh asphalt, so no racers have to worry about the old dirt scratching their new cars. And then we got a picture of the kind of racetrack, and this is located inside the quarry. So it looks pretty cool. We've got like some tight twisty bits in here. You can see where cars have already been racing on it. it looks very, very nice. I like it. So the main building... The main building consists of three parts, the lobby, the spectator box, and the competitor box. The lobby. This consists of a front desk and the entrances to the boxes and elevators to get to your personal room and one car garage space that comes with your membership. So even if you buy a membership, you do get a small garage that can store one car, it says here, which is nice. So I'm guessing there's going to be like special cars um, so if you own one of these special cars, you can at least keep one of them at the track, but I'm sure you can upgrade this later for more space. Um, well, let's see the front desk. Uh, the front desk is where you can, uh, buy your track membership as well as get your car delivered to the front door or to quick find drift events. The spectator box is open free of charge. Players can watch replays of computer-generated drift races, as well as choosing to spectate actual races between players. There is also a bar and gift shop included in the area. So, a bar is not really anything new, but the gift shop, I'm wondering if that will be like the casino uh, gift shop, where there's only exclusive items in, the, uh, in that shop, because in the uh, casino shop there are only certain clothing items and jewelry that you can buy there so you can't buy them anywhere else so i don't know whether it will be like that but it sounds interesting the gift shop items the gift shop 
uh, sells multiple styles of items ranging from exclusive clothing to decorations. So I guess that answers my question. I should probably read on a bit before I start asking questions, but there we go. Um, items sold, we have clothing, model cars, painting, and paintings. So they're the three things. It would be quite cool if you could get a model of your own car. I think that would be quite cool. So if you built um, a car, um, it would be quite cool if you could get a small like scale model of that car and it had like all the upgrades and stuff you put on it. That would be quite cool, but probably won't happen. But then we've got the competitor box. So this is what it looks like. It kind of looks like the garages we already have, but it has a lot more of this kind of living space. Uh, which the garages we currently have don't really have this so it looks nice actually we got a pool table be cool if the pool mini game actually works so you could play pool with your friends that would be nice um, but then the competitor box resembles similarities to the spectator box with some distinctive changes the competitor box consists of a bar so we can see the bar i'm guessing is this bit here with all kinds of drinks free of charge. We've got some drinks down here as well. A model, a model of the track, sorry, to help racers get familiar with the track. And the competitor box also has a board that displays a wall of fame that consists of some of the DLC's creators, times, and cars to add depth for realism. There is a poker table. We can see right here, so it's pool table poker table very similar uh similar to the poker played in red dead redemption 2 to help create a more competitive atmosphere so i've never played red dead 2 but i'm sure um well from what this sounds like there is pool tables in that game and there is like a pool table uh, or i should say uh, poker table uh, like mini game so maybe that is going to be a thing i don't know let's see so the first mission slash slash race, sorry, my speech is terrible today. Um, after purchasing your membership from the front desk, you'll be thrown into your first mission. So this will be like a setup mission like you have. Usually you buy the new property, whatever it is, and they send you out on a setup mission. This is going to be similar to that. We will be provided to a pre-built drift car that is very slippery on the corners. The mission then explains that there are three different types of drift races. And this looks like the drift car that you're thrown into. So it is a modified Dominator GTX. Very nice car. And a drift version of that would be quite cool. So points. A race where the player... Sorry. Oh, so these are the different styles of races, I guess. So there's like points races. A race where uh, the player with the most points from holding drifts and avoiding collisions after a number of selected laps wins. Then there's the first to cross the line, I'm guessing. Uh, a race where the player who crosses the finish line first wins regardless of the drift score. And then there's style. So a racer... I think that's supposed to be a race. A race where other players judge other players based on their ability to drift and rate players accordingly. Now, this one sounds a little bit... Um, it sounds very cool, and I like the idea of this, but I think this might be um, abused a little bit in uh, GT Online. Um, the kind of thing you have to watch with this is you're going to get friends, um, you know, just judging you know they're going to vote for their friends you know they're going to rate for their they're going to rate um their friends and not actually you know there will be people who will do it properly and they will rate you know um whoever actually is the best in their opinion but i feel like this would be abused and a lot of people will just vote for their friends to make a load of money so it's a cool idea but I'm not sure whether this last one would work in GT Online. It would have to have um, some kind of thing where you can't vote for your friend or something, I guess. I don't know how that would work, but a nice idea nonetheless. And then the first race puts you into... The first race it puts you into is a points race. 
After the race, you get a call from the tune-up shop mechanic saying that he has watched you race and noticed the car was handling a bit rough and that you should bring it by the tune-up shop, you know, to get it fixed up, I'm guessing. Then we get an introduction into smuggling. So this is the other side of the DLC. After delivering the car to the tune-up shop, you are put into a cutscene where the mechanic pulls you aside after work on the car and starts talking to you about the computer inside uh, installed in the drift car. He explains that the computer has a ton of illegal wear linked to drug smuggling rings using cars. He then pats you on the shoulder and explains that he has installed the base version of the program into your computer located in your solo garage space that, uh, that you get with your membership but would suggest upgrading or getting one installed into a runner car. So um, I've talked to Lucifer about this and um, to explain this a little bit better maybe, um, basically you're going to have a, a computer inside of your car and this is going to be like where you can launch these like smuggling missions from. So initially you will have one of these computers um, in your garage, but you can actually put one of these computers in your car as well. So when you start out, it starts in your garage and you can launch missions from there, but you can actually upgrade your cars to have a computer inside as well. So you can kind of launch these missions on the fly. So um, kind of like how the terabyte works, where you can sort of park up anywhere and launch a mission from there. So I really like that idea, actually. It's kind of neat that you have this kind of thing in the computer um, and you can put this in your car. It kind of reminds me of the um, the kind of like GPS thing that they have in Fast and Furious where um, whoever's in charge of the uh, GPS sets a route and then all of the people carrying the drugs kind of follow the route and get to the drop-off point so i think that's where he got it from i did talk to him briefly about this and um i sort of asked him i said oh is that where you got this idea from and he he did say that it was kind of similar to that so yeah if you've seen that movie that's basically how it's going to work so then we move on to the smuggling setup so the smuggling computer is a setup of multiple components the base edition and the purchasable add-ons along with the optional car install. Purchase add-ons transfer across both the computer and the installed, uh, the car installed computer after purchase. The base edition of the computer program allows you to accept pickup and drop-off missions that range in distance and difficulties for different payouts. The pickup could consist of picking up a client and taking them back to the drift track or it could consist of picking up a truck or a large package or stash for a later drop off. A drop off could consist of dropping off a client from a nearby location to another while keeping them alive or you could be responsible for dropping off some drugs stashed in a vehicle. So these sound very interesting, actually. So it's kind of like um, taking like high-profile people and protecting them, kind of like a protection service. But then it's also kind of drug running, and then it's also like a taxi mission. And yeah, there's going to be loads of different missions that are going to vary. It will give you something to do in GTA Online, which would be quite nice. But um, I can see these... I can see these getting very, um, you know, monotonous after a while um, because you know what Rockstar are like. They usually only add a handful of these different kind of source missions and then eventually you start getting the same ones. But they do sound very, very interesting. I like the sound of these. You know, um, if they made them very interesting, you know, if there was people chasing a guy, you had to pick him up and keep him alive, it says there. And then you could be responsible for dropping off drugs as well that were stashed in a vehicle. So you'd have to drive to a location, there'd be a car parked there, and you have to, uh, you know, uh, take that vehicle to the drop-off location. It sounds very interesting. I do like the idea of that. And then we have the database add-on. 
So uh, the database add-on adds access to the LSPD database that allows players to check other players' statistics, including username, rank, mental state, money, and properties owned. And you can see an example of that here. So it tells you like the name of the vi of the um, the person. So Lucifer Reap right here. You can see if there's any aliases, the age of the person, the height, the weight. And then it also tells you their preferred vehicle and preferred weapon. And then it gives you like a criminal record and stuff. So that's quite interesting. I guess this works kind of similar to the Terabyte as well. Where you can like scan a player and it will tell you about that player. So that's very interesting. Then we have black market dealing. So the black market is ran similar to the progression system um, that the other businesses have where the more you run the business, the more you unlock. Available for unlocks in the black market are new guns, vehicle upgrades and imported cars. So I don't know if this is going to work similar to the research in the bunker where the more you can you know the more um research you do the more you unlock and the more kind of missions you do the more you unlock personally i really didn't like the research i like the preferred method in the arena war dlc where it was kind of um it was kind of locked behind a paywall so if you played the game you could unlock it at like a trade price but if you had enough money, you could just buy it outright and you could pay a lot more for it. So I prefer that method of it. Um, I do like that. Uh, it kind of gets you to play the DLC a bit more, which is, you know, that's the whole point. That's what Rockstar are trying to do. Um, but when you actually have to go in and unlock stuff like the research, I really didn't like that. So hopefully they do it kind of like the Arena War and not like the gun running. Um, but I guess... I guess we'll have to just see if this DLC ever got added. And then we've got the tune-up shops. So after construction of the new Davis Drift Track, multiple new tune-up shops have popped up around Los Santos. So you get your own private one at the Drift Track, but there are also multiple ones like the LS Customs that are dotted around the map. So these tune-up shops specialize in drift and runner builds, similar to how you can upgrade at Benny's or the Arena War cars. These tune-up shops have multiple locations dotted around the map and can also be used to store one car or upgrade normal vehicles. So you can take in like a normal vehicle like you do at Benny's and then you can upgrade it into a runner build or a drift build. And then it becomes like a specialized version with different upgrades. And then we've got the vehicle list. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, Lucifer came to me and he said, I'm struggling for some cars. Have you got any suggestions? So I sent him a bunch of cars. So we've got a few here. So I'm not going to run through all the cars, but you can see some of the cars here that he's put down a lot of these are kind of tuner vehicles so we've got the mazda b2200 uh, that's kind of like a little um truck uh, i think it's like a mini truck and then we've got a few um supercars in here the bugatti b110 and the koningsegg jesco and then running through the list you can have a look at this yourself if you want to but you can see most of these are tuner vehicles but then we have got the chevy s10 so another little mini truck, but that's like an American one, and the Chevy Silverado. So very, very nice there. Personally, it would be nice to see some more muscle cars in here, um, because I know um, in America, the drift scene, and also in Australia, is quite big with American vehicles as well. So drifting is not always just Japanese vehicles. There's a lot of American drift vehicles out there as well, and Australian so possibly nice to see some Australian and American drift cars in here, but a very nice list anyway. And then new vehicle upgrades. We've got the twin turbo upgrade. So a new upgrade in the turbo category allowing you to add twin turbos to the vehicle, which drastically upgrades your vehicle's speed and acceleration, but it does reduce your handling. Then we've got 
NOS. So this is something I've been wanting for a long time. The NOS we got in the Arena War DLC I thought was really cool. It wasn't too powerful, but it did give your vehicle a little bit of a boost. And I think it would be nice to see that on all the vehicles in GT Online if you wanted to buy it. So available from the tune-up shops, you can now get two different types of NOS fitted to most of the vehicles. These include a power shot. A power shot NOS drains your NOS tank quickly and takes longer to refill, but gives you the maximum amount of boost. And then you've got a long run, which takes longer to deplete and is quick to restore, but doesn't provide as much of a boost and is more subtle. So that's quite cool, actually. You can choose which one of those you want. And then another thing I've been wanting for a long time, engine swaps. Some vehicles will have an option um, to... Uh, some vehicles will have an, a new option to their engines where you... C basically, engine swaps. <laughs> I'm not going to try and read that because uh, my reading's just gone out the window today. But basically, you'll be able to swap the engine. It will give you better performance. And uh, it may change your vehicle class, it says there. So, if you put a supercar engine in a sports car, it might then become a supercar. So, that's quite interesting, actually. It would be nice if it changed the sound of the engine as well, because that's something that doesn't happen in GTA Online. If you, you there's a few cars you can swap the engine in. Um, like if you upgrade the engine, it will actually change it from like a four cylinder to a V8, but it doesn't change the engine noise, which is kind of a bit strange. So when you do like an engine swap in Forza Horizon, it will actually change the sound of the car. So it'd be nice to see that happen, and I think uh, Lucifer would agree with me there that that's something he would want. But then we've got the Black Market Unlocks. The Black Market brings some new unlocks to the scene, some new others greatly desired. So we've got the new weapons and attachments. Uh, we've got the 1911, the iconic gangster handgun for generations finally imported into los santos we got the glock we got the underbarrel grenade launcher and then we got some new vehicles as well we got available as the first unlock the unarmored z380 this is a vehicle i think a lot of people would be very happy to see in GT Online an unarmored version of the ZR380. If you don't know what that vehicle is, then go and Google it. But it is basically one of the Arena War vehicles, and it would be nice to see an unarmored version of that. I totally agree with that one. We got the Dominator Classic, a gem of the 1970s, finally brought back for its revival to help wreak, uh, wreak havoc on the street one more time. This is a Vanilla Works mod, for those of you who haven't seen it. And I know we already kind of have a Dominator Classic. You know, we've got the Vapid Ellie. But that is actually based on a... Um, I believe that's based on the Shelby GT500, which is technically a classic Mustang. But, you know, there's a lot of different classic Mustangs. So, you know, another classic Mustang like this, a Dominator Classic, would be very nice to see. Then we've got new emotes, we've got a wrench toss, pretty self-explanatory. We've got water break, the character pulls out a Rockstar Locoed water bottle and drinks from it. We've got welding, character pulls out a welder and proceeds to weld, that's very cool, I like that. Then we've got the dealer, the character pulls out a wrapped brick of cocaine and offers it, that's very nice. And then we've got clothing options, embroidered leather jacket. We've got racing gloves. That would be very nice to see because we don't really have any racing gloves in GT Online at the moment. And then we've got embroidered hoodery, hoodies, sorry, a logo muscle shirt. So muscle, muscle shirts with logos on the back and, and small on the front. And then that concludes the concept. As usual, support and f uh, feedback and suggestions are appreciated and of course as i mentioned at the start i will leave a link to this in the description so if you want to go and leave a comment on uh, his amino page here then you can go and do that and i'll also link his instagram down below 
Um, he is quite uh, active on Instagram. So if you want to leave him a comment on there, then you can do as well. And he usually does watch these videos as well. So if you want to leave a comment on this video, I'm sure Lucifer will see it. And if he doesn't, I'll pass it on to him. Uh, but that concludes the DLC. Very, very nice DLC. Lucifer's DLCs are always a joy to have a look through. So I'm sure he's watching this video. It looks absolutely fantastic. Um, I definitely want to see this added to GT Online. And as I mentioned at the start, he is hopefully going to be making a uh, trailer for this along with Layla Matic. So if you want to see that, I'll of course um, do a review of that when it releases. So that's going to conclude this DLC concept. I hope you did enjoy watching. If you did, then please smash the like button and subscribe. We are trying to reach a thousand subscribers here. So if you want to support us with that, be greatly appreciated. And until next time, thanks all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.